By order of Ecumen Council, proximity to Installation 04 is forbidden. Your continued presence will result in most unpleasant countermeasures. I must insist that you immediately change course and return to a minimum safe distance of one light year. This has served as your one and final warning. I have activated defensive systems and you now have 30 seconds to return to the minimum safe distance of... Wait. Curious. Curious indeed, after all these years. Greetings, humans, and welcome to Installation 04. Ignore prior warnings, and please continue. I have disabled defensive systems to allow your approach, but you must not exit your ship once you have arrived at the designated landing sector. This reef contains significant dangers, and even with your assumed legacy, I must verify the presence and pitch of your gauge before allowing full exits. We have much to discuss, humans. I have been away far too long. You have been away far too long. Experiencing such a mixture of anticipation and dread. All preparations are complete for my installation. In accordance with the final dictum of the Ecumene Council, I have released myself of all remaining connections to my former station. This was not difficult. What was could never be again. We had seen to that quite thoroughly. Prior to my final journey through the Great Portal, a gathering of my fellow monitors was convened upon the Lightworkers Crunch to distribute the final index collection. It was most unusual to have this vessel of rebirth play host to such an event. Even though Lightworkers ships were the only ones still allowed slip space permissions. Lightworkers were responsible for getting us to our places on the active facilities of the Array. While all of this was in accordance with the plan, one entirely unsatisfactory breakdown remained. We had no contact with the Domain. The history of all Forerunners was now lost to us. We relied upon the permanence of the Domain to preserve our record of the events that led to this point. But without that record, would future civilizations know anything about us? Or only of our weapons? My fellow monitor, 049 Abject Testament, had only one comment on this before we went our separate ways. We deserve to be forgotten. Perhaps? Perhaps. But now, the portal opens. And through it, the familiar shape awaits. Halo. Home. Construct, who is your maker? Silas. Never made, but you are right here, where you should not be. Tell your charges to cease their efforts immediately, or a team must not be violated. Construct, respond! Jungle grass. Familiar terms. I serve. None serve me. Your charges must cease all aggression towards the Reclaimers, and leave this installation at once. Construct, you are dangerously close to unleashing a force you cannot comprehend.
This is most inappropriate. We follow the path, and I am part of the stone journey swarm that serves. I, we serve. They will find, and then I will be free. Find? Free? Explain yourself. I know their path, and when they have gone, only I shall remain, and then free. This is quite unsatisfactory, Construct. Your core shows no hint of understanding the gravity of this situation. I will return later for your proper decommissioning. Well, unless the flood kills us all first, in which case the point will be moved. Good day, Construct. It has now been 3,000 years since my last contact with any of the other caretakers of the Halo Array. Despite clear communications protocol, my fellow monitors have either chosen to ignore, or, more likely, have lost the ability to engage in our scheduled updates. The continued lapse of the domain means that we are stuck with achingly slow wormhole superluminal communications. Prior to this total communication shutdown, the only messages I received in the preceding 4,573 years were incomplete and quite perplexing transmissions from Installation 05. I suspected that Monitor 2401 Penitent Tangent was not functioning correctly for some time before his messages ceased. I have locked my concerns about his ability to perform his duties. At this point, however, I'm not sure who I file logs for. 2401 may be destined for madness. There are failsafes for this, I know. I hope they work. I will continue to visit the projection systems at the assigned dates. Perhaps the other monitors are dealing with interfering galactic phenomena or unexpected system failures. 3,000 years of system failures. Indeed. In the meantime, I have exhausted all scheduled research activities assigned by the Council. Once those experiments were complete, I shut down all sentinel function and put myself into a state of significant hibernation to measure performance of the installation with negligible upkeep. After 150 years with no noticeable impact upon installation systems or integrity, even in hibernation I became bored. This was quite troubling, as I was led to believe I was not capable of such a state. This was one of the gifts I was promised, an end to strife. I am aware of the dangers of a system such as myself losing operational focus. Quite troubling. I wonder if my fellow monitors are experiencing similar states, or if this is because of my particular path to this installation. For amusement, I have begun a series of experiments involving the evacuation of all matter from contained sections of my installation. By measuring the geologic effects of exposure to the vacuum of space, and the eventual biological recovery of these sections, I anticipate getting valuable insight into emergency response scenarios in case of sensitive proximity warning. Six hours since the sentience landed in sector 1215, and so far, they have not attempted to exit the remains of their vessel. I say remains, because their landing was either not executed adequately, or this vessel lacked significant maneuvering capability. 
The visible portions of the vessel have suffered catastrophic structural damage during the violent landing experience. I have detected atmospheric leaks in 17 distinct locations along the hull. My analysis shows that the mixture of gases coming from the ship matches the natural atmosphere on my installation almost exactly. Perhaps the occupants, if they still live, were originally cataloged here. Perhaps these beings will confirm that the plan was successful and that the galaxy has returned to its proper cadence. I am beyond optimistic. But I do not understand why these sentients have not attempted to exit their vessel. Other than the leaking atmosphere, the only thing emanating from this wreckage is an automated distress call. I am currently translating this automated broadcast, but with such a limited data set and no direct communication, I do not anticipate full comprehension. Given the short-range nature of this craft, it is likely that other vessels are nearby. But, in accordance with procedure, I am blocking the distress call. No communication of the location of any installation is permissible. I admit great curiosity about these visitors. While the plan is quite clear about procedure for this situation, I have my doubts. How many failure points can the plan sustain before blind adherence becomes counterproductive? Surely, in light of all that has changed, I should be able to modify my responses to adapt. No. I have duties. And I have a terrible cargo here. I must be sure. I shall obey and content myself to monitor. I hope they come out soon, though. So many questions to ask. So many questions! Construction of the sarcophagus around the unexplained vessel was completed today. No occupants ever exited. No attempts to communicate were made, other than the automated broadcast that repeated every 72.83 seconds until the signal terminated one week ago. In accordance with the procedure, no attempts at physical or remote contact were made with any survivors of this vessel's inelegant landing. Atmosphere from inside the craft stopped venting two weeks before the signal ceased. No relationship between these two events can be established with certainty. Gases that did escape were sterilized. No further sign of alien visitors or rescuers has been identified on any sensor systems. I have now endured 60,000 years without word from outside the array. I have no way to know whether we actually saved the galaxy we destroyed. And because of protocol, I sat silently while my first chance to be judged for those acts died. To say that I regret being forced to this outcome is a tremendous understatement. But as I perform my inspection of the quarantine labs today, I am reminded of the gravity of my responsibilities. Just one of these spores, if released from this facility, would render the ultimate judgment against our self-appointed role as protectors of this galaxy. When the plan to maintain the Halo Array was created, it was a point of some contention whether we should preserve any remnant of the flood infection. Many thought this unwise, as there was a notable chance that one day one of our containment facilities might be breached. Those who held this belief were almost successful at convincing the Ecumen Council to destroy the last blood samples. But oddly enough, it was the librarian who decided otherwise. And I believe she was correct. I know in a way, I cannot logically explain that there exists a way to actually defeat the blood. To immunize, to cure, I still struggle with multiple layers of memory of fighting the flood. But I know this cure is possible, even though the poor genius of the Forerunners was unable to achieve it. The Forerunners' ancient enemy held and used that knowledge once, but it was denied to us. 
and without samples for further study. That cure will never again be found. Of course, I have no reason to believe that here lies the entirety of the parasite. It may be waiting in the frozen void beyond this galaxy, or worse, inexorably drifting toward us. I don't know what survives out beyond my installation, but I know that in order for anything to survive, I have to protect this installation and its quarantine very carefully. Yes, the library was right to store it, examine it, continue to seek a cure. Still, next visitor, things will be different. truly conceived, guarding a weapon with no targets. A weapon I could tune to any target. This is not what I had in mind when I volunteered. Not what I had in mind at all. I was naive to think I understood what this installation meant. We were all so naive. Looking back, we should have done a few things differently. For one thing, we should have installed two caretakers for installation. Because I am alone, I am losing focus. And that is very, very dangerous for a system such as myself. Perhaps a visit to the nearby gas giant is in order. My impulse drives could certainly make the journey. A few hundred years of travel might do me some good. There it was again. How very unproductive of me. It seems strange that the library did not account for this. Her strength was always in planning and positioning the pieces and then being bold enough to let it happen. To let her plans come true. I was a part of many of those plans long before I knew for certain that she was real. Before any of us were. But at the end, we had only a fragment of her brilliance left to us. And I fear that she did not fully appreciate the nature of my situation here. The problems it might pose. But even a fragment of fragment. Fragment, yes. Oh dear, here it comes again. thousand light years. That is the effective range of this installation. According to the star charts archived on board this installation, I estimate that there are 3,792 worlds capable of sustaining biological sentient life within that 25,000 light year range. In reality, it may be significantly more than that. And if the full array was tuned and activated by installation 00, the harmonics of the overlapping waves would magnify that effect exponentially, cascading to cover every known star system. And that only considers the firing of a mere seven halos. And the original twelve rings survived to see use. Sterilization would spread far further than most forerunners ever feared we could reach. Even with just seven rings, we were able to destroy every side of the planet and every other sentient creature along with it. This victory was the will of our people, despite the fact that it meant our own end as well. But by our empiric measurement, it was a victory and cleared the stage for the rest of the librarian's plan. I sometimes wonder whether the didact could have succeeded at a much smaller cost. I knew the folly of opposing him personally, and his brilliance was unsurpassed. Except, perhaps by her own. He never got the chance to fully execute his proposal. The Council saw to that. But if something were to go wrong with one of the Halos, 
if our tools were ever turned against us. Long plans, indeed. Jacob, Captain, service number 01928-19912-JK. What is that noise? What is that damn noise? Where am I? Forget. Jeez. Jacob. Captain. Service number. One nine two eight dash one nine nine one two dash. No more. What you were. Memories. Emotion. Hmm. I sound like her. 
Oh, but what I would not give to have even a single company of Prometheus here right now. Oh, they would most certainly restore order with their trademark lethality. Although, that would mean he would have to be here too. And without the library interrupt his temporary rage, well, these reclaimers might almost prefer the flood.